Senator Chris Murphy of Connecticut is leading Senate Democrats in a filibuster to push for gun control. Uh, not actual legislation this time. It is in the form of amendments that they are hoping to put onto a bill that's being considered. They're trying to stop debate until that actually happens. Now, we talked about yesterday on the show, there was uh, the moment of silence. And uh, some try in the House, uh, Democrats tried to get Ryan to talk about when they would actually have consideration of a couple of different pieces of legislation, which we're going to break down in this video. And Paul Ryan, with a smirk on his face, shut that right down. He wasn't having anything aside from thoughts and prayers, not in the halls of American power anyway. But so Chris Murphy decided to do this filibuster. He sent out these tweets to prep uh, the nation. I'm speaking on the Senate floor to honor the victims of the Orlando attack demand the Senate address gun violence with the hashtag enough. And then I am prepared to stand on the Senate floor and talk about the need to prevent gun violence for as long as I can. I've had enough. And so there is a, a schedule planned of multiple speakers who are going to be uh, filibustering on into the night. And I believe at some point we're going to go to some uh, B-roll of, of that on. Are they right actually now. filibustering, meaning mm -hmm. are they preventing discussion well, of something I mean, else? Well, I the Republicans will have you think that because they are actually obviously obstructing government now, mm -hmm. that they're the ones standing in the way of any kind of pro progress because they're doing this talking filibuster that Murphy's gotten onto the floor. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, they're not standing in the way of any pending legislation that the Senate's voting on right now, but always the Senate is busy and always the Senate's doing you know, whatever it is, uh, theoretically. Uh, theoretically. Yeah, I don't know that uh, always the Senate well, is busy. No, 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 yeah. I'm saying the floor of the Senate is, I meant right. to say the floor of the Senate is busy with, you know, some sort of chatter or legislation. But the point is, they're going in front of the Senate and in front of their constituents, but mainly in front of the Republicans to show that all the Democrats are there and they just want common sense uh, gun legislation. Chris Murphy has been, you know, really behind gun control for a long time, but most specifically since uh, Newtown because he is the... Um, junior senator from Connecticut, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, and this is a kind of thing that will put this issue uh, in, yeah. in. At least they can, the Democrats can say, "Hey, we talked about it. We tried to do something," and it makes the Republicans seem, again, as if well, they don't it, want. It, it also yeah. it forces the media's hand with a filibuster right. because you can talk about uh, the need for Congress to act and do something, and then there'll be some stories about Congress. But as long when Congress is not acting and really and not showing that they're not acting. That story goes away. Yeah. Uh, you know, it'll be for a day or two or however yeah. long our attention is. But this forces a story on the Congress's lack of acting. It sort right. of forces, as yeah. Michael was saying, puts Republicans on the on the defensive. And more importantly than just sort of winning politically, you know, you hope at some point that it pressures uh, that there is a world where you could pressure enough Republicans into thinking, you know, how it used to be, where you'd get uh, some members of the other party right. who go, yeah, you know what, the, we should do something. Yeah. You know, uh, but of course they, you know, in this climate they won't. This filibuster will. Only one it. Republican so far has asked a question. You have to, the only time that you can yield the floor is for a question, yeah. quote unquote. So someone say, I'll yield the floor to Senator McCaskill of mm. uh, Missouri. Senator McCaskill goes out there, she'll speak, she'll you know talk for a while, and then she'll say, which brings me to my question, <laughs> right? yeah. because that's the the form they have to go with. Uh, uh, ben Sass, the Republican senator from Nebraska, reasonable uh, guy. Uh, well, yeah, I mean he's only reasonable. Right. To, you know, Only reasonable in the new standard. In of, the new standard of what Trump. reasonable is. Right, right. He's a, but he is a fascinating guy, and he's mm -hmm. a smart guy, and I find him to be a really interesting senator. To that, to that yeah. point, yes. But he came and he asked a question. He's the only Republican who's thus far, you know, as last I looked, has said anything about it. Also, I think it raises the profile of Chris Murphy to um, yeah. to a place where people talk about. It. I think that he's the kind of senator that um, that will be considered for the vice presidential. Uh, nod by uh, by Clinton. I think he's a one issue now senator. He's a young guy. He comes from a Democratic state, meaning Could help you win he, Connecticut, right? Well, I mean, <laughs> Republican. I mean, you know, vice presidential candidates have nothing to do with winning anything. But it was probably since LBJ, right? I mean, no, there's not even. It's not. Yeah, that would be the last that time you could make time. a make a strong and maybe case. only time, right? I mean, yeah. before I mean, that, it, the evidence is 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 is. It really just quickly is is mixed on that what is clear is that there's no evidence that it helps there's no evidence that it hurts <laughs> getting somebody from ohio to help you win ohio but as we know the presidential race is about the president right not yeah, about and the always president. has yeah, been. which but, doesn't seem fair but murphy <laughs> really. the thing about murphy is is that he is young there's sort of a clinton gore type of thing he's sort of young and wonky and and um, and Clinton wasn't, and this Clinton though is a little bit more wonky yeah. and not quite as young. So maybe that he could play a gore time. I always yeah. boost him up because I think he's really smart and kind of passionate about an issue that the Democrats can, I think, always do well talking about.
Well, I know that in Connecticut we reported that they recently made it so that uh, weapons can be taken away from those who are in the, in the process, I believe, of being on trial for domestic violence charges, which seems reasonable considering the number of people who go on from domestic violence to murder through the use of, uh, of guns. And uh, so, first of all, I'm frustrated with even the inclusion of the term talking filibuster. That's just such an admission of we have no historical context anymore, even in relatively responsible outlets. A filibuster is supposed to be a filibuster. It's supposed to have the media focus its attention on you, um, which has risks and it has potential benefits. And I would say, considering the times that the government has been shut down through real filibusters, fake filibusters like Ted Cruz's famous uh, Dr. Seuss filibuster, for absolute BS, a misunderstanding of how the budget actually works, of what the debt ceiling actually accomplishes, I think that the Democrats could use this opportunity to accomplish something for the victims' families and for the families of those who will become victims if nothing is done by not just having the one day or the two day filibuster, but saying, that's it, that's it. We're not doing anything if it takes a week, if it takes a month, we're not progressing until we have actual legislation. And there are a lot of issues that you could try to do that on and I think that you would fail. But I think this is one where a lot of Americans are sick. They either are sick of the situation or some have become incredibly apathetic, and this is the sort of thing that could knock them out of that. The realization that there is a window where we could actually accomplish something. And so let's talk about some of the things that they want to accomplish here. So uh, Chris Murphy's spokesperson says, until private sales at gun shows and over the internet also require stringent background checks, and unless suspected terrorists on the no-fly list are prohibited from legally purchasing guns, our lax gun laws will continue to allow terrorists and criminals to amass a weapons stockpile. Senator Murphy will remain on the floor demanding the Senate adopt these measures. And uh, there's, there's other things that you can do as well. I was, watch, I was listening to a little bit of Rachel Maddow's show yesterday where she said, okay, maybe we don't have the actual balls or ability to do something like stopping a suspected terrorist from buying a gun. But how about if they buy a gun, the FBI finds out about it? Right, that there's at least a notification. A notification. Yeah. Right. Maybe we could do that. That would be something. Um, because right. <laughs> but I mean, what's amazing is that they, everyone who makes it their business to knows that I was at the Warby Parker site looking to buy glasses because every web page I go to has the glasses I was looking at at Warby Parker. Like, <laughs> like so the, the Amazon is spying on me, the world is spying on me in my internet traffic. Uh, but the thought that we would let the FBI know that a guy who's been interviewed by the FBI right. <laughs> has bought a weapon that's solely designed to shoot a lot of bullets in a short period of time, that somehow we got people on the right objecting to that is staggering yeah. to me. Yeah, and I, I just, I can't understand how, like the media is going to cover the filibuster, I'm sure, hopefully, uh, maybe fingers crossed there, but that only one Republican even asks a question and the rest can just say casually, Fuck it, whatever. I said, I said that I cared. I said that I prayed. I'm out for now. If you need me, I'll be in my chambers. That they can do that. And, and knowing that they're not going to, to, to face any penalty from the voters as a result of it. That they can just say, yes, I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to get on my knees briefly. Is that enough? I did 60 seconds. I did 90 seconds. Is that enough? Can we move on until the next shooting? Until, until I then can pretend to care they again? They don't even give. And nobody cares. They don't even give the most money, the NRA, right? I mean, they we've don't. Been through this. No. Like they give a lot to a lot. They give they, a lot yeah. to a lot, but there are other there are other businesses, there are other trade associations, that's what yeah. they are, who give more money, and yet their power is seemingly, at least at times, unsurpassed. I mean, Donald Trump, said today, I, I, I jump ahead a little bit here, uh, but Donald Trump said, or tweeted, because he didn't say anything, he only tweet, <laughs> tweeted that, hey, I'm gonna meet with the NRA and maybe we'll talk about uh, banning assault weapons to people on the, on the no-fly list. And the reaction from people on the right was as if he had said, I'd like to repeal the Second Amendment. Yeah. yeah, or I'm thinking about setting off a nuke in D.C. That's right, right. that's right. Yeah. The, but the other, the let's, other let's thing that's that different point is that the, the, yeah. this, these guns, and this issue is so much more public all the time. You know, the, the Petroleum Association, Trade Association, could be giving a ton of money to Congress to try and get the number of light ends and bitumen that they put into uh, <laughs> asphalt there. And we're not going to sit here and care about that. But they yeah. still have to give a lot of money in order to do that. They have a lot of money. But the impact of guns on society 
is so disproportionate to the impact of so many of the other things that when you see what the, the, the stranglehold that even at that level of giving the NRA has, it's, it's even more upsetting. And this is also, what's, what's strange is all these politicians, they're opportunists, right? So you think common sense would say that there's one Republican who could say, hey, you know what, and I'm, I'm actually, because Ben was telling me to write more, I'm gonna write about, I was in the middle of writing about this, that you think there'd be one Republican Mm-hmm. who's out there saying, hey, actually the Democrats are right about this. Yep. That he could have all kinds of currency, get all kinds of momentum, and also, hey, all right, so be afraid you might not win your seat, but your bravado might win you your seat, too. Mm-hmm. And, and might I, win your seat or get you a different kind of power after right. you lost your seat. Exactly. But, you know, I mean, I want to get to the story, John, So, in, but in 15 seconds, they 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 abdicated that the, any chance of having those people. I mean, and it took them 30 years, but they're gone. They literally they're drove gone. them out of the party because if you think that the Democrats had a fair point, or forget Democrats, that sensible Americans had a fair point on that one issue, then you also thought it about global warming because you have a degree of sanity and appreciation for facts on the ground. But those people, the Jim Jeffords and the Lincoln Chafees of the world, and even to some extent the you know guys like Richard Luger, who were certainly more conservative, they just they they can't they couldn't. Yeah. There was no spot for them. 